Hello folks and welcome back to Tubius Engineering. Today's mission is to take apart this wheelchair for two reasons. One, to make a little bit of extra room in the shed because it was quite a beastie. And the other reason, to scavenge all of the really useful parts out of it. A big thank you to Alex and Alex's family for very kindly donating this wheelchair. This is a couple of hours worth of pretty hard work. There are a lot of parts associated with this wheelchair and actually it's really quite an impressive beast of a machine. There are so many linear actuators inside of it and so many gas struts inside of it and so many motors. It's going to be useful for many projects going forwards. This permobile wheelchair costs between seven and twelve thousand pounds new depending on specification so you can imagine the amount of engineering that's gone into it it's really really well made it's absolutely solid and because of that it's really quite hard work to pull apart removing the control arm trying not to cut too many cables just the cable ties themselves and then getting the back plate off was a right old task and most nuts, bolts and screws are the hex or allen type of screws. The thing that I'm looking forward to getting down to is the base with the wheels. And going forwards, I think it's going to be quite interesting to see what we can create with the base and wheels of this chair. But it will definitely be some kind of automated or remote controlled robot system. Let's get that seat back off and start addressing the mechanical infrastructure. My eyes light up as I see a couple of parts on the seat back that are going to help us with future projects. Finally, I feel as though we found something useful here. It's a gas strut. Sadly, one of the gas struts has lost its gas, but this particular gas strut is still useful. So we can use it for some project. I don't know what yet. Anyway, look at this lovely, lovely, lovely gas strut. It's a damped gas strut. You can tell by the action. It has a very smooth action. Right, come on, stop mucking around, Harry. Let's get in there and let's start pulling more of this apart. With the hand controls, the arms, the footrests and the seat back removed, the mechanical backrest infrastructure needs unbolting before we can get underneath that base plate. Let's find as many nuts and bolts as we can as possible and remove them in order to gain access to the bottom of the seat. The funniest thing happened and I'm really happy that I wasn't leaning over this and sadly I didn't have the camera running but there was a massive gas strut that flipped that seat back upwards. It narrowly missed my face as it flipped upwards. It threw my tools across the garden and could have broken my jaw. At this point, I threw caution to the wind and decided to start undoing as many bolts as I possibly could, sort of focusing in the areas that I wanted to disassemble, but just cracking on with things. It was taking me a little bit longer than I'd expected, and this thing was so well built. There were too many goodies in here that I really wanted to get my hands on. Let's start working on getting that linear actuator out. Those things are worth an absolute fortune. Not only that, but they're really, really useful. I'm sort of thinking to myself, perhaps I could automate the opening and closing of the bar hatch on my new shed. That would be fun, wouldn't it? And what's interesting about the seat base is it has a little micro switch on it. So it knows if somebody is sitting in the seat. Anyway, more connectors undone, more bolts being undone. Things are getting just a little repetitive now, so I'll stuff a little bit of my self-composed music in here for a couple of minutes so you can enjoy that as you continue to watch me work my way through the system. And I'll be back with you in just a minute.
we've got this beast of a machine undressed. Have a look at the size of the motors that drive the wheels on this. 24 volt, uh, up to 10 amp. And that there is a seat riser. That's going to be a powerful beast. We could turn that into some kind of a press. That would be quite interesting to have a muck around with, wouldn't it? The other thing that struck me is there's an electrical RCD breaker in the middle of the thing, which is controlled by a long piece of steel. So rather than mounting a switch on the outside of the unit, they put a long actuator inside the unit and put the switch in the middle of the unit, which is quite interesting. I decided to make life a little bit easier for myself by using a grinder to remove the stabilizing wheels rather than undoing lots and lots and lots of nuts and bolts and removing the large drive wheels. Anyway, good news, here we have it a base for a beautiful robot of some description in the future that fits in the shed nicely. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for watching Dubious Engineering. Take care, have a wonderful week and weekend, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and beers, folks. Bye for now.